All right, so two-part question. Uh, first, are you looking for an art director? Second, <laughs> um, uh, outside of work, um, what really inspires you? What, like, what kind of artist, what kind of design, what kind of music? Um, art director, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, in terms of like what inspires me in life, it's so many things. I mean, I, um, I love the show Abstract right now. Um, I'm obsessed with that. Um, it's really just like, you know, it's like chef's table, but for design. Um, I listen to a ton of podcasts, um, kind of a whole range. Like I love um, HBR IdeaCast, which is more of a business-centric podcast. Um, I also love like everyone TED Talks. Um, but I kind of try and get like a range because sometimes I think that sort of tangential inspiration brings up interesting ideas. Um, and then I love like going to galleries in New York and um, yeah, just Ooh. like a whole, a whole melange. Thanks. Uh. Hi, first of all, Hi. I wanted to say thank you because I'm you. in the middle of the freak out mode right now. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's my usual place. Uh, right, I feel like I spend 80% of my time there. Um, and you've talked a little bit how you get to that breakout um, so what else really works for you to like make that transition and how do you deal with just living in the freak out mode for like most of the time? <laughs> um, well, I think once I identified that this is my creative process and that if I want to get to like breakthrough, I need to go through freak out. That definitely helps because I can at least, you know, identify like, oh, I'm in freak out mode right now. Um, and that is part of my creative process, so it's okay, even though it doesn't feel very comfortable. Um, so that's one thing. And then I think, you know, I really do try, you know, throughout that freak out process to um, create those conditions that help me get, get through that. So, you know, bringing people that I trust into the room or talking, you know, I have certain friends that I really trust that I can talk to. Um, and yeah, I write a lot. I also like always have a notebook with me and I try and just constantly be writing thoughts, ideas, inspirations, like what I'm freaking out about. Um, and sometimes it's helpful because at the end of every day I write um, sort of my highlight, my low light. Um, I have a couple like questions that I ask myself every day. And when I look back, it's really instructive because I see the, I see the past freakouts and I, you, when then you get some perspective on it and you're like, oh, you know, that wasn't really something that I needed to be freaking out about. So it sort of helps to temper that as you go along. Awesome. Thank but, you. But freaking out is OK. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Hey there, I just Hi. really want to acknowledge you for your transparency. Oh, thank you. Just leveling the playing field and, you know, we're all human beings just doing our best on the journey, right? So thank yes. you for just, you know, you're in the freak out, you're in the creative zone, you're in it all. And, and the tools that you shared, it's something different, the call and response and all of that. Yeah. Um, I just want to acknowledge that. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. It's been very inspirational. Thanks for opening up. It's really good. So I have a practical question. When you first started Refinery29, how did you fund it? How did I? Oh, fund, fund it. Yeah. Um, well, we actually started it. So um, we started it with our own money, with $5,000 okay. of our own money. And hello, do you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we, um, hi. Thank you. Uh, so we started it with like a very tiny bit of our own money, um, but we like we all had freelance jobs. I actually started it when I was still at City Magazine. I probably should have been fired because I was using like every you know lunch break and night and weekend to work on Refinery. Um, so yeah, I did like freelance jobs for about the first two years of Refinery, and then um, our first funding came from Stephen Allen. Um, who actually invested in us to take that map that I showed you and turn it into an e-commerce site. Um, so that was an investment. We don't, we don't have e-commerce anymore, but it really helped us to get our start. And um, we used that funding to, to do the e-commerce, but also to help build the content. Um, and that piece is what really took off. So we ended up kind of leaving commerce behind as we grew the content. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no problem. Hi, um, my name's Breda. I've just recently moved over here from Ireland and I've just started my career in branding. And I was just wondering, uh, have you any books that are on your reading list or have you any, anything you'd recommend? 
I mean, what, like what I'm dying to read. Right now I'm dying to read this book called Drop the Ball. It's by Tiffany Dufu. Um, and it's, it's all about, well, it's not necessarily about branding or, create, or creativity per se. It's more about um, kind of determining what your highest purpose is as a person and then dropping a lot of balls so that you can really focus on that. Um, and I, I don't know, I heard her speak and it was really inspiring. So okay. I'm dying to read that. Great, thank you. Yeah. So much. Thank you. <laughs>